going on guys welcome back to the channel I'm starting this video a little bit differently I'm starting it from inside my actual office uh, reason being is when I shot the video that you're gonna see in a moment um, I completely forgot to shoot an intro I quickly got to start working on the truck I started talking about the changes on the truck and after I was done I kind of let the, the truck sit for a minute so I can get you a quote-unquote cold start you know the truck already had operated earlier that morning um, but as cold as possible without having to sit for a day to get the uh, the after sound shot and I completely forgot to shoot an intro so I'm shooting it a few days later as I'm editing uh, the actual video so this video is about the brake vacuum pump um, in relations to its uh, technical service bulletin and more so the replacement of the product so the brake vacuum pump on the 14 to 18 does have a technical server bulletin up on Chevy's uh, website that you can find. I'll link it in the description. Um, that way it'll make it easier for you. So just a quick overview on it. It is pretty much the failure of the brake vacuum pump where it is going to prevent you from having a smooth braking experience. For example, when you're actually braking, your, your brake is designed to compress. When it's doing that, it releases the vacuum pressure um, and then it starts to build it back up and, and vice versa. So what ends up happening is with the brake vacuum pump failing is that you get a hard braking experience which means after a few continuous brakes the system doesn't have enough time or is not producing vacuum quickly enough so what ends up happening is you get a really hard braking experience where your pedal is pretty much almost locked in its position um, of course that's dangerous so if you are experiencing something similar to that take it over to your Chevy dealership and make sure that they replace it um, and push for them to review the technical service bulletin. Um, that way you're not losing time on any kind of diagnosis fees or anything like that um, and get that repaired as soon as you can. Now for my specific truck, it wasn't necessarily that I was getting that experience. I was just getting one of the symptoms that is mentioned in there is that the, via the product or the device can actually cause a ticking sound. Now, our, our trucks are noisy trucks. We are a direct injected vehicle, meaning we're gonna hear that injection pump making some noises and they're gonna be loud in the way that they communicate. My truck also has close to 90,000 miles, so I'm not expecting a brand new truck, very quiet idling vehicle. But when you see the before and you see the after, you will notice that there is improvement on how loud the vehicle is actually ticking and sounding um, in the sense of it's idle. Um, initially, actually, when I put the part on, um, I was initially disappointed until I actually got to hear the before. I quickly forgot how much louder the truck was on the before start. Before I replaced that part, it was actually pretty loud. And it was a little bit obnoxious and, and honestly a little bit embarrassing. You know, the truck looks good. Typically, I keep it pretty clean. Um, it, it looks like it rides nice. And then you pull up to a drive through or something like that where the sound can really echo. Um, and it, you know, just makes the truck sound like it's older than what it really is. So I am happy with the replacement. The truck is definitely not ticking nearly as loud. Um, so um, just check out the video, guys. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe it. I am putting a... Uh, 2022 goal of myself to put at least one video a month um, up on my channel related to the truck and maybe some other things that I like to do. Um, I just want to start picking the camera back up again and shooting some video and content um, and sharing it with you guys and, and family and friends. Um, so check it out, guys. Let me know what you think. Drop something in the comments, you know, about your thoughts on it. If you've already replaced it, what your experience has been with your uh, Chevy Silverado or any video you'd like to see. Peace. So I've loosened up uh, the vacuum pump for the brake system and it had quite a bit of oil more than what it said it should have inside. So definitely if you guys are going to replace this part I recommend um, just putting in the oil drainage to capture the oil. Um, I used the cardboard and it didn't really work out so I had to switch over to just like an oil catch. Um, that way you know I'm not spilling all over the freaking driveway. Um, 
I did remove the steering shaft, which some people recommend for just easier. So now I'm just gonna fiddle that way out of there and try to get it out of the uh, out of the passageway there and install the new one. If you look at them they're slightly different in their design this is the original one that was on the truck um, and this is the new updated one that you can either go through the technical service bulletin uh, on the recall if you have the uh, the brake symptoms which are hard braking um, pretty much almost inoperable braking after a few bumps my truck did not have that symptom all it has is a pretty annoying tick sound sounds like lifter tick just a little bit lighter um, so I just went the route of replacing it myself to save myself uh, the hassle of dealing with the dealer. It's only a $145 part, I'd rather just do it myself. All right, so the pump is all installed. The vacuum line is reconnected. The only thing I'm missing is the crank sensor, plugging in the uh, little plastic grommet to hold the wiring harness. Um, and I'm gonna use this little belt um, installment tool that's going to allow me to mount it on in the two cock position on the belt and then pretty much rotate the crank and put the belt back on. Um, I was going to replace the belts but just kind of taking a quick look at them they pretty much look like new so I'm not going to return them I'm going to keep them here um, for any reason in case I need them in the near future but as of right now it just doesn't warrant you know taking it all apart you know because to get that back built out you need to take off the serpentine and the accessory belt um, to get to that belt. So I'll just keep running that belt as is and go from there. Let's get to it. <laughs> 